What is going on, everybody? It's the Frost and Moy here for a Monday Night Raw review for February 22nd, 2021. The day after one of the most embarrassing characters and one of the most embarrassing wrestlers in WWE history won the WWE Championship. And after today, it's clear he's a transitional champion 100%. And he's most likely losing that title to Bobby Lashley next week. But it is what it is. WWE just loves to embarrass their fans. Miz is honestly one of the worst things to ever come out of WWE in the last 20 years. This guy is an embarrassment. The sooner he loses that title, the better. The wrestling business as a whole will never get better until people like him are gone. There is com Comedy is okay in the wrestling business when it's done right. The Miz is not that kind of comedy. He is a bad joke upon a bad joke upon a bad joke. He's a bad comedian just telling you the same shitty piss poor jokes over and over and over again. And they just gave him the WWE Championship last night. Why? Because they want to have Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania take on Bobby Lashley and win the WWE title in front of, in front of fans. What they are planning to do last year. Did you see the big pop he got at the Royal Rumble when he won that thing last year? And every week after that, how, how, how high his stock was in WWE from a wrestling perspective to the fans' perspective, everything. He was just on cloud nine. Everything was going great for him. And then COVID came, wiped everything out. And he has had no title matches in front of a massive audience. He has never held the WWE Championship in front of a massive audience. And WWE wants to rectify that by having big old bad Bobby Lashley win the WWE Championship, take it into WrestleMania against a Drew McIntyre, and having Bobby Lashley lose to Drew McIntyre in front of fans. Now, this is a stupid idea. Honestly... I want to see, I like Drew McIntyre being WWE champion is fine. I want to see other people get those opportunities. Other people like maybe eventually a Ricochet if they would build him up. If they would have built Ricochet up from the day he started on the main roster to now and actually put time and care into him, he could be a WWE champion. But with the way they're booking him now, no. But yes, they could have been, he could have been a WWE champion. Angel Garza eventually could be WWE champion if they gave him the time and the place to do it. But they don't. So our next WWE champion is most likely going to be Bobby Lashley. He's also going to be a transitional champion if they do with how they're going to go with things. And it's just going to... It, and honestly, everything that goes on between last night... And WrestleMania just diminishes the title 100%. Miz coming out, wearing a suit because he's got to look the part even though he doesn't look the part. Wearing his fucking clown fake uh, makeup. Wear wearing the WWE title, looking like the biggest clown in all. And hey look, there were balloons around the ring. Only thing missing was the red hair and the big, toast and the big clown shoes. My god, is he fucking... A, and we came to Miz TV... He's naming all of his accolades and all the people who helped him win the WWE Championship. Pretty much just saying it all him and nothing but him. And yeah, Miz just being Miz, what do you expect? So out comes MVP. Congratulations on the title win. He brings up Miz saying he forgot to mention how Lashley pretty much destroyed um, Drew McIntyre last night. Before his win, Miz says he was getting to that. He thanks them both, but he says he, had, he and Morrison have more celebrating to do. And says, this is over, goodbye. But MVP is like, this, we're not leaving. And you want to reveal the terms of that business agreement? Morrison helped Lashley lose the U.S. title. And now Miz owes Lashley to make it right. Lashley tells Miz he owes him a shot at the end. Miz agrees, but adds that he never said when that was going to happen. And how busy he is, he's been, he like, Miz is making all these goddamn excuses to why he won't defend his WWE Championship against Bobby Lashley. Because, of course, Miz is a fucking coward. What do you expect? But, so, 
Bob Monashi says, I'm going to give you one hour. If I don't have an answer, if you don't give me the right decision, the right answer by 9 o'clock, I will beat you so badly. You'll be starting in a new reality show uh, called How Lashley Sent Me to the Emergency Room. So that would be later in the show that we would find out what's going to happen with the WWE Championship. When will Bobby Lashley get to get his hands on the current champion? And if everything goes the way it seems, Bobby Lashley wins it. Of course, they went with next week, but Bobby Lashley wins the championship. Miz, Morrison go up against Bad Bunny and Damian Priest at WrestleMania. That's where this seems to be going. Even WrestleVotes said on Twitter today, or late last night, that Bobby Lashley is penciled in to be a part of the pay-per-view of uh, the WWE Championship match. Miz is not. So anybody want, thinking that, oh, it's just going to be, that's how they're going to do it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's it for them. So, Lucha House Party is backstage congratulating champ, new champion Matt Riddle. He thanks them by having his back as of late, which, when, when, they asked, when was the last time that happened? He goes on ranting about nothing and says he's, meaning, he's naming the eagle on the front title Travis. Okay. Ends up pulling out his scooter and riding off as we go to the ring. As he takes on John Morrison, Matt Riddle took on John Morrison, non-title match. Of course, anytime a champion is in a singles match on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown, you always have to wonder, is this champion going to lose? Because if this champion loses right now, then obviously the person who's facing them is going to, um, who beat them is going to be their next challenger. Now, these two... <clears throat> These two had a hell of a match. I would take... The, if you wanted this to be the U.S. Championship match going into fast lane or hell, even WrestleMania, even though that's probably going to be Keith Lee, I would not be mad about that. This was great. These two went out there and just showed you why they are who they are and why they should be battling for a championship. This was a proper mid... This could be a proper mid-card feud right here. John Morrison versus Matt Riddle. After Miz loses the WWE Championship, I would have him blame John Morrison. They break up. John Morrison goes on his own. He goes for the United States Championship. Miz gets off of our fucking TV where he fucking belongs, put his ass on main events, and then John Morrison can go for the U.S. title, then eventually go for the WWE Championship around maybe SummerSlam, if I, I, was, if I do say so myself. But yeah, Matt Riddle gets to him with the bro Derek, <laughs> blocks the Starship Pain, Morrison went out there, tried everything, and could not get the job done. But I do want to see more of Matt Riddle versus John Morrison. Like, plain and simple. Like, WWE has an, has a stupid, and I mean stupid amount, of talent in the mid-card. So, I would love to see a Matt Riddle, John Morrison feud over the United States Championship. And not like WWE's definition of feud, where it's like every every single pay-per-view from now until the end of fucking time, or between now and SummerSlam, is John Morrison versus Matt Riddle. I just, I don't want to see that. But, I do want to see these guys go at it for the WWE, for the United States Championship. Maybe even like, you know, have a series of matches and then... John Morrison wins the United States Championship. Who knows? But like I said, if this is where this is going, of course everyone's speculating Keith Lee versus Matt Riddle. If that's at WrestleMania, if that's if that's the case, Keith Lee wins the United States Championship at WrestleMania. But we still have Fastlane to get through, so maybe Matt Riddle defends the title then. Maybe not. Who knows? We get a coming soon vignette for Rhea Ripley. Looks like she is coming to Monday Night Raw, where we figured she was going to be. I mean. SmackDown really doesn't need anybody in the women's division. Raw has the the, the actual contenders for Oscar on Raw are Shayna Baszler, Charlotte Flair, and that's it. People you would actually take legitimately to take the title from Oscar would be Shayna Baszler, Charlotte, and everybody else is just there. So getting Rhea Ripley in there, maybe she's going to take on Oscar at WrestleMania. Even though I have a stinking feeling that they're going to have um, Oscar versus Charlotte again. Now, of course, last night was supposed to be Oscar versus Lacey Evans for the Women's Championship. Of course, Lacey Evans became pregnant, so they had to cancel that match. And they couldn't find a replacement, even though 
you have all these other women out there who don't have anything to do. They could have gave, they could have gave just for a pay per view match to extend that show a little bit because that show is only two hours and thirty two minutes. Uh, two hours and thirty two minutes. But yeah, Oscar versus Rhea Ripley would I think be awesome. Oscar versus Shayna Baszler would be awesome too. I want somebody other than Charlotte. Back from break, we see Bad Bunny's performance on SNL with a 24-7 title. He actually, our truth, didn't show up. He'll be in Damian Priest corner later tonight night against Angel Garza. We see Sarah Chavez backstage with Bad Bunny and Priest. Priest spots our truth with a referee and he calls him out. Truth comes over with some comedy explanation, but Priest knows he, what he's up to. Truth gets Bunny's name wrong and Priest aggressively corrects him, which leaves the truth running away. As they mentioned on commentary, with Pri- with Bad Bunny being around Damian Priest, how would you? Who's gonna stop Bad Bunny? Who's gonna take that title from Bad Bunny as long as Damian Priest is around? I don't see many people doing that. I just don't. So we go to another look at what happened with Bobby Lashley and the Miz earlier. Miz is backstage with Pierce, complaining like he is looking like a bitch and everything else. He points out how there is nothing in the writing between he and Lashley, and Pierce agrees. He suggests that Miz step up and face all challengers, including Lashley, as he's now WWE Champion, and everyone has doubted him. Miz says he will face all challengers, not now. Pierce is going to respect with what Miz, Miz decides, but he reminds him, time is ticking, so you might want to come up with something soon. The New Day versus Retribution, in case you want a nice and T-bar. So, why this match is happening, I don't know. I see that Mia Yim's out of quarantine because she was with these guys. And the look on Xavier Woods' face and Kofi Kingston's face when they saw Reckoning was with Retribution. As you know, Xavier Woods beat two members of Retribution and lost to two members of Retribution. And he's been wanting to have a match with Reckoning, a.k.a. Mia Yim. Which WWE's not going to give him more than likely, but he still wants that match. I mean, again, if Reginald and Sasha Banks can, on Fox no less, have a intergenital wrestling match, so can Xavier Woods and me again. But yeah, this match early on, Retribution is just beating the fuck out of these two. It looks like it's just going to be one of those ones where they just they they just dominate the entire time. But they go for the they hit their finisher, which I do not fucking remember. Oh, it's High Justice. That's right. They hit High Justice on Kofi. They go to get the pin, but Ollie's like, "No, don't pin him yet. Don't pin him yet. Do it again. Do it again." I'm like, "What the fuck is he thinking?" Why is he thinking that? All you have to do, man, is let your boys get the pin. It's not that fucking hard. But no. What does he do? He lets them get... He has them go for the for high justice. They go for it again. Woods pulls T-Bar on the top rope, so T-Bar falls over it. Kofi with the Trouble in Paradise to May, sending him outside. T-Bar comes back in and gets hit with another Trouble in Paradise. One, two, three. And the New Day beats Retribution because of all Lee's arrogance. They had to win. High Justice. One, two, three. It's over. Retribution gets the win. But no, no, no. All they wanted him to do it again. Why not you get the pin? Then you do another thing of High Justice. Or a third one. Or a fourth one. Why the fuck would you do? Why the fuck would you stop your team from doing, to, from getting the win? After the match, Xavier Woods and them leave, of course. And then Mustafa Ali comes in and just starts berating these guys. Like, how many times are you going to fail me? What the hell is wrong with you? I, put my, I bust my ass for you guys and this is how you repay me? I, and it's like, dude, you cost them the match. You know the reason they lost. They had the win. They hit the double team finisher. Boom. Over. Kofi's dead. He's not coming back up. But what do you do? Like, no, no, no. We're going to do it again. What the fuck are you? It's not their fault. It, it, it's just so stupid, man. It's just so dumb. Mac from break, and we see how Bobby Lashley demanded the title shot, and Adam Pierce is in the ring now. He says the deadline is here, and Miz to give Lashley an answer. He introduces Lashley, shakes MVP in Lashley's hands. 
And of course, Lashley is dressed to wrestle. Pierce then introduces Miz. Miz, however, is not. And Lashley is pissed because he thought he's getting a title match right here, right now. Miz comes in and he's like, dude, I, I, have my, I have my decision that I need more time. And Lashley's like, I don't want, no, 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 stop stalling, you're wasting my time, and I don't like wasting my time or my money, so you better get, you better make this decision. And he just comes up with all these excuses, and then Morrison's like, how about we in a week? Miz is like, fine, a week, we'll do a week, no problem, that's fine with me, I just need that time to be at my absolute best. Before anybody could say anything, out comes Braun Strowman, who wants a WWE Championship match right now. He is pissed that, sh- and he name drops Shane McMahon again. Out comes Shane McMahon on cue, which I hate that Brian Saxton is like, oh my god, Shane's here. He's like got this whole like hurt on for Shane. And it's like Shane's always at these shows. Everybody knows that Shane McMahon is at these shows. He works in the fucking back with his dear old dad. Everybody knows it. So yeah. Shane comes back again. Says uh, he actually insults Braun Strowman. The guy has the balls to insult Braun Strowman. Says like the match with the match last night was for former WWE champions. You're a former Universal Champion. And he's like, if you have any like brain cells left in your head, and it's like, oh, Jesus. But that's say that. Here's the, thing. Here's, here's the thing. How about this? Because Sherman's like, if you're not going to give me a title match, then give me a match against the challenger. And Shane's like, you know what? That's very interesting because I like that idea. I really like that idea. So how about this? How about Shane McMahon, how about Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley? If Braun Strowman wins, he gets added to next week's title match, which would then become a triple threat match. Of course, if Bobby Lashley wins, it's only a one-on-one match still. Which, Strowman's like, that's fine. Everyone's like, that's fine. And before... You know, he says, that's the smartest thing you ever did, you ever said, Shane. Bobby Lashley attacks him from behind, not clips him at the knee, and that was that. So, Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman is your main event. Tornado Tag Team Match, Raw Raw Tag Team Champions, The Hurt Business versus Lucha House Party. Why this was a match, I don't even know why. These guys already lost the two um, tag team champions in a tag team title match. This is what happens when you don't have a tag team division, unlike AEW, which has an overabundance of a tag team division. Raw has none. He, they have the Hurt Business, the Lucha House Party, and that's about it right now. So, this pretty much, this match, the entire match was pretty much Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin going, anything you can do, I can do better. So, Lucha House Party did get a couple shots in. But it was pretty much like, oh, you can do that? Well, let me show you I can do this. And they just kept going back and forth with this shit. Until eventually we got a... a, Lince with a big hook around to Cedric. Malik walks the top row but misses the stomp as Cedric moves. Shelton runs in, levels Lente Leak with a clothesline. Shelton then tosses Lince into a knee strike by Cedric. Into the pay dirt for the 1, 2, 3. And the Hurt Business are your winners. Decent match overall. The tag team champions are pretty good. I just, yeah. Nothing special about the match. It was a tornado tag match. You don't see those every day in WWE, so I guess you can find that as a positive. So, Damien Priest has help, helped Bob Bunny win the 2027 title. We see all that happen, and then we go into that match. So, again, this is one of those matches where Bad Bunny was on the ringside area. I totally thought we were going to have R2 sneak up during the match, have him pin Bad Bunny, distract Damian Priest, and Damian Priest would get pinned by Angel Garza. Thankfully, that did not happen. So, Angel Garza doing everything he can to just antagonize Bad Bunny. He wants Bad Bunny to get in the ring. He's just yelling at this guy. He's saying shit back to him and over and over. He just doesn't know when to shut up. So, 
Goes to get not sent Damien Priest to the outside on the opposite side of the arena, uh, the ring. He starts taunting and wanting, like, come on, man, get in the ring. Let's go. You want to fight? Let's go. Then they, Bad Bunny doesn't do anything. Bad Bunny just points to him, say, dude, look behind you. Damien Priest gets back up, kicks him in the head, goes up top, does a, a jumping spin kick. Holy shit, that was interesting. You have Damien Priest with the big, big, a big roar, hits the reckoning, which is now called the lights out. Hit, I'm sorry, hits the lights. So yes, Damien Priest has had the name of his finisher called the reckoning for years now. WWE came up with Mia Yim's name, reckoning, and said, "Well, we brought Damien Priest up. We can't have his finisher name, his finisher be named after." Um, Another wrestler. It would be kind of weird. Unless, unless, unless like, Mia Yim and Damien Priest were dating or something, that would be fine. But since that's not the case, and she's actually engaged to Keith Lee, congratulations to those two. Um, yeah. Hit the lights. One, two, three. And that is that. Here's the thing. WWE, you, don't you have a list of everybody's finishers and what they're called so your announcers know what the hell they are so they don't forget? Why would you go with the name Reckoning for somebody if you already know somebody in NXT has that as a finisher? It's kind of stupid, but hey. Hit the lights, whatever. Moving on. So, Priest recovers and stands tall with Bad Bunny. Out comes some 24-7 dumb fucks. It can't Tazawa and Humberto Correa and Drew Gulak. Well, because Tazawa and Humberto Correa get leveled by Priest and Drew Gulak gets thrown over the top rope by Bad Bunny. And that was that. So we go to commercial break, we come back, and Randy Orton is talk is in the back talking about how he should have won the WWE Championship because he should have won the gauntlet match last week. Why didn't he win the gauntlet match last week? Because he got thrown to the outside, and Alexa Bliss just face-covered every single screen in the Thunderdome. Every single screen was her laughing and her face showing up, and he got counted out. So... He was actually, and he mentioned this too, he was the very first man. Instead of being the sixth man in, he was the first man out. And he can't focus on the WWE Championship because he's distracted. He's not distracted by The Fiend. He took care of The Fiend. The Fiend has been burnt to a crisp, and he is no longer here. But I'm being distracted by Alexa Bliss. We get a replay of The Fiend going up in flames, and he says he took care of The Fiend, and while some think he's coming back, he's not. He's gone for good. Asks, why can't he focus on the WWE title? He tells us he starts to cough, but regrets his, gains his composure. Says he is still distracted, but not by The Fiend. He is distracted by Alexa Bliss. And we get a partial replay of her in the pentagram, or pentagle, whichever one you're going to go with. Promo from last week, where it goes to red. Like, those candles go out, it goes to red lighting, she's laughing, we come back, and he's coughing, and he shoots, he's, uh, he spits up thick black liquid. If you remember a couple weeks ago, in his match against Edge, Alexa Bliss showed up on the eight on the turnbuckle with the same black liquid coming out of her mouth. He stumbles, hum, hurries off camera with the black liquid coming out of his mouth. And ends the segment having the announcers confused. So, more mind games from Alexa Bliss. Obviously, the match with WrestleMania for Randy Orton is going to be The Fiend versus, versus Randy Orton. Most likely, maybe a cinematic match. I'm not sure. This is, of course, going to be the first time we have actual fans in attendance. So, who knows what they're going to do. But, we'll see The Fiend back. And I don't know what he's going to look like. So we've seen the announcement from Legacy Evans on her pregnancy from last week. And go straight into Charlotte Flair and Oscar versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. If you don't know, this is a Royal Rumble pre-show match re rematch from last month. This was bad. Awesome. Now, now I will say the first scene, first few sequences of this match when it started with Oscar and Shayna Baszler. This was Great. The opening part of this match was awesome. And I'm thinking, please, please, Vince, if you can give us any match at WrestleMania, give us Shayna Baszler versus Asuka in a 25-minute women's match classy because those two will go tear the house down. 
We're probably going to get Shiela versus Asuka, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But holy shit, this was great from the start, and then it just went downhill from there. As soon as all, as soon as soon Nia Jax and Charlotte Flair tagged in, it went downhill. So, basically, the end of the match came where Oscar attacks Blazer and Flair charges, but Blazer avoids it. Flair nails, Char- nails Oscar with a running big boot. Flair and Blazer end up tunneling the floor. Jax follows up with a running leg drop to Oscar for the pin in the win. So... Nia Jax looks to probably get another a woman, Raw Women's Championship match because she officially pinned the Raw Women's Champion. <clears throat> Going in the fast lane, it would not surprise me. After the match, the tag champs walk away. Charlotte goes in to try and console the woman that she just not booted in the face. And of course, Oscar wants nothing to do with that. She pushes away and is like, get away from me. Charlotte's like, fine, whatever, and leaves. She's just not not having a good time for Charlotte Flair. Not at all. So, we see what happened between Braun Strowman, Shane McMahon, Bobby Lashley, and The Miz earlier tonight. And we go to Sheamus, Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Um, eh, Decent match here. Nothing special about it. Sheamus versus Jeff Hardy. Jeff is definitely showing his age week in and week out. It's just not getting any. He's not getting any better. Just saying that right now. Goes for the swan Tom, but lands on his feet as the knees come him, as his knees gives him trouble. They go back and forth and trade counters. They twist the fate and a bro kick or miss. Sheamus nails a big knee straight to the face. Then the brogue for the one, two, three. Then we go backstage to Charlotte with Hall of Famer Ric Flair. She says she can't focus on tagging. She can't do this. She can't do any, like deal with this because Ric Flair is pretty much a distraction. And she's not a fan of the fact that he last week was just celebrating as if he was the actual bro- father, father of the baby. Rick was like, I never said that. I was just, I was trying to, I saw intrigue. I saw potential in Lacey Evans. He said that. He's like, he felt he felt he could mold her and help expand the brand of Flair. And Charlotte just says, dude, just go home. You're ruining everything. I'm trying to protect the legacy of the Flair name, which, yeah, that, that legacy, that Flair name has gone way out the window with you, Charlotte, because you, yeah, every, here's the thing. She did say that when she goes out there, she doesn't want, she's trying to go out there and prove that she can do this on, the, on her own, that she's not just Ric Flair's daughter, daughter, that she's Charlotte Flair, that she is her own woman. And I will say this again, you decided to allow them to put Flair on your last, give you Flair as your last name, which they didn't have to. Your full, your shoot name is actually Flair. You don't have to use the Flair name. You could have just been Charlotte. Never, like, if you wanted to be not in your father's shadow, you could have just went with the name Charlotte. Don't even put the Flair name on there. Don't wear the robes. Don't have the remix music of his. Don't use the figure four and, to, and make a figure eight out of it. Don't do the woo. Don't do the strut. Don't do anything. Do your own stuff. The natural selection, that's your thing. That is your thing. Your dad never did something like that. When she was doing that in NXT, that, I was like, well, at least she's doing something that's not her father. She's doing her own thing, and it's helped building her own stuff. She does the spear. Her dad didn't do a spear. Do things that your father didn't do. Don't try and mimic your father. If you want to step out of the the shadow of your father... Chop the flair name off. This is one of those ones that WWE said we're going to shorten your name just to um, get to get you out of your father's shadow. I would be fine with that. Usually I don't like people getting their name shortened, but Charlotte Flair needs to go back to just being Charlotte. What this needs to lead to with her um, feuding with her dad or pitching, like having problems with her dad is chopping the flair name off. Getting rid of the figure four. Getting rid of the robe. Getting rid of the remix of her dad's entrance theme. She needs her own theme that sounds nothing like her dad's. Get rid of every single aspect of Ric Flair and be your own person. You're in this position and people are going to say this your entire fucking career because you allowed it to happen. Is that you're only in the position you're in because you have Flair on your like the flair name and that is it she is a decent wrestler she's not i'm not saying she's ter- like the worst wrestler ever that's Britt baker by a by a mile by about 100 miles but 
in the grand scheme of things, if Flair wants to, Charlotte Flair wants to be her own person, chop the Flair name off, get rid of the robe, get new entrance music, get rid of the figure four, get rid of the strut, do not woo anymore, and be your own person. She, and yeah, she gets very emotional towards the end of this. But he needs to let her be herself. She tells um, Rick that she loves him for a few for a few times. It says that's it. She walks off and goes and Rock goes back to commercial break. Yeah. Charlotte wants to really get away from her dad. Then you need to be on a different brand than him if he's going to be out here doing things. Which, honestly, with Lacey Evans being gone now with the pregnancy, Ric Flair has nothing, no purpose on here anymore. He was brought back to be a thorn in his daughter's side while also trying to boost Lacey Evans. Now, she's going to be gone probably the rest of the year. Probably the rest of the year. We probably won't see Lacey Evans until the Royal Rumble of 2022. Just saying. I know Becky Lynch could have been back right now. She could have went to the Royal Rumble and been in the Royal Rumble match, but that didn't happen. Will Becky Lynch be back? I don't know. See, Lacey Evans has already had a child, so she's a little bit more prepared for when she has that child, what to do and how to handle it. So, when she wants to come back, she'll probably come back a lot sooner than a Becky Lynch in the same time frame. But yeah. So we go to Naomi and Lana versus Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose. Waste of a time match. Lasted maybe even two minutes. Lana runs and tags in Nanny, Mandy, um, Naomi. Rose drops, drops Rose with the double team for the pin and the win. And they celebrate as if they won something big. Wow. Boring match, nothing you can say about that. Then we go to AJ Styles versus Ricochet. Now on paper. I would not mind seeing AJ Styles versus Ricochet. I'm pretty sure in other in other lifetimes they've uh, other companies they've had better matches if they've wrestled outside of WWE. I'll have to take a rain check on that. I'm not sure if they have or not. But this is AJ Styles 2021, and this is Ricochet 2021. Who do you think is gonna win this match? Ricochet hasn't done jack shit. Another match that lasts maybe about five minutes, if that. AJ Styles wins, no doubt about it. So, Omos comes in, lifts, deadlifts Ricochet as if he's a little, as if he's, as if he's a baby, as if, if he's one of those, like, you know, um, big stuffed teddy bears that you get um, at a carnival or something. He just picked him up easily and then dropped him down from high, high up. And then the Miz and John Morrison are walking back, uh, discussing who they should be rooting for in the main event. Strowman walks up, stares them both down. They walk away in fear and back to commercial break. Five minutes left in the show. We have Braun Strowman versus Bobby Lashley. And this was a big hoss fight. What did you expect this to be? These are two big, beefy, beefy boys. You know, somewhere in the back, probably in his usual spot, Vince McMahon was having a fucking um, hard-on to this match because we know how Vince McMahon loves his beef. So these two beat the hell out of each other. One of the biggest things about this was that Bobby Lashley kicked out of the running power slam. Bobby, he avoids uh, uh, avoids another one, then hits a big spine buster. Lashley runs the ropes, hits a big spear... One, two, three. Braun Strowman is out of the WWE Championship match while Bobby Lashley will get his WWE title match after the match. He tried the entire a couple times in the match to get the Hurt Lock on. Could not get it done. But he does put the Hurt Lock on afterwards. Pretty much incapacitating Braun Strowman. Miz, like an idiot, comes into the ring, tries to attack Bobby Lashley with the title, and Bobby Lashley ends up picking him up, hitting a lifting spine buster. One, two, and I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm counting. Just picks him up, picks up spine buster, grabs the championship, celebrates on top of the um, turnbuckle, and that is that. So, Miz, hopefully will be done next week. Have the title for one week, and then we can go have somebody who is a legit champion because... Miz is a transitional champion through and through. He's not going to WrestleMania this time. Last time they made that mistake, and it was one of the worst WrestleMania main events of all time. By the time and by the time Miz got to WrestleMania, last time he was champion, he was an afterthought in his own title feud because The Rock had come back, and WWE was more focused on building Rock versus Cena. But 
that is your Monday Night Raw review. It was... It was decent. It wasn't anything special. We could, we need a better, we need some better stuff. Hopefully, things will, like the whole, mm, I don't know. But that is your Monday Night Live review. Decent at best. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at the front, uh, I'm sorry, mine's at the front, mine's. Find me on M I D M I D S M I N D S. Minds at the France Club, twitch.tv slash France Club, and Instagram at the France Club. And I will see you guys Wednesday for some actual good wrestling. Until then, my name is the France, and I'll see you guys later.